Hello folks, Dobbers here once again. Welcome back to Food by Dobbers. So we're going to make a hot chicken sandwich. Very easy, very simple, absolutely delicious. Ooh la la. We're going to be making a lovely little seasoned flour. Here I have hot paprika, cayenne pepper, sweet paprika and smoked paprika. We have garlic powder, onion powder, white pepper, black pepper, a little bit of dried oregano, and a little bit of dried mixed herbs. So what we're going to do is very simply, we've got a little bit of self-raising flour. In go all of our spices. And just with a whisk, we're gonna give that a nice little mixy mix. You beauty. Now, we're gonna put that one aside. We're going to work on the second part of our hot chicken sandwich. So, we have a little pot. We have some absolutely glorious lard. Place our lard into our little pot. Put that on the stove with the burner not on. And they've all turned off. What a jerk. Okay, so all we're gonna do is place that onto the stove on a high heat. What we wanna do is bring that to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, here. I have ready to go hot paprika, some sweet and smoked paprika, yeah, some dried oregano, onion powder, some garlic powder, some white pepper, black pepper. We've also got malt vinegar, honey in the cutest little squeezy bear honey bottle you've ever seen, and some Tabasco sauce. So all we're gonna do is bring that fat up to temperature. We're gonna add in all of our spices, and then once our spices, we're gonna take it off the heat and then whisk in our liquids. So we've got spices, We've got extra spice, we've got sourness and sweetness. So you've got this beautiful, zingy, spicy little glaze, which we're gonna glaze over the chicken once it's deliciously fried. All right, now we just have to wait for our fat to come up and ooh la la. So how about Hawthorne, hey? Absolutely smash Collingwood. Okay, folks, so our pork fat or well, AKA lard has come up to temperature. Just melted there beautifully. Whisk in our spices. Now, the reason why we bring, up, bring it up to temperature is that temperature and heat helps toast off and draw all the flavors out of that spice. As soon as those spices go in, she's ready to roll. We're gonna hit that with some Tabasco. I like to be quite generous with Tabasco. I absolutely love Tabasco. No inferior alternative, folks. Don't stand for it. Got a little splash of malt vinegar. Nice squeeze of honey. Give that a little whisk. Now all those liquids that go into the hot lard, they stop the cooking process, not allowing our lovely little glaze to overcook and burn the spices. Have a look at that. Nice and split, slightly thickened. Let's have a quick taste. Ooh la la. In my opinion, more Tabasco. Always more Tabasco. Let's finish it off, mate. And bam, down she goes. There you go, folks. Hot chicken glaze, Nashville style. But remember, I'm no expert. Oh, oh. Jesus, that's got some gumbo. Woo! That's just the way we want it, though. Next step, ranch sauce. I'm not sure whether ranch traditionally goes with this. I personally like ranch with slaw, sour cream, those other flavors, the mayonnaise, garlic powder, the onion powder. All those beautiful flavors match perfectly with the spice in the chicken. Adds a nice hot and cooling touch. Here we have mayonnaise, sour cream, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of black pepper. My favorite herb, dill. Very, very simply. Transfer these to a bowl. Chop up this dill. This is a hot chicken sandwich. You don't have to be too fancy with it. Keeping in all those stems, because all those stems have beautiful flavor into the bowl. I'm unsure if dill traditionally goes in ranch. Could put chives, seen recipes with chives and dill. This is just my version of folks. You know, the beautiful thing about cooking and creation is that you can pretty much do anything you want to anything and still sort of call it that. That's a beautiful part. Let's have a quick taste. Oh, absolutely lovely. However, Needs just a little bit of salt, splash of vinegar, just to give it a bit more tang. Oh, baby. Ranch sauce comes out, ready for later. Well, folks, it's time 
to make some coleslaw. Many different ways to skin a cat. Many different things can go into coleslaw. I'm gonna show you what I like, but in the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. If you like carrot in your coleslaw, add carrot. If you, if you like to use red cabbage in your coleslaw, use red cabbage. Me personally, I like a nice white coleslaw because the contrast between the lovely red chicken and the white slaw, beautiful. Got one little white onion, dice this up. In the onion goes. Now I've got a lovely little quarter wedge of white cabbage. As fine as you can get that. If you want to use a mandolin, you can. If you want to slice it by hand, you can. If you want to use a vegetable peel to get it even finer, you can. Then folks, in we go. To this, we're going to add our lovely little ranch sauce. Give this a little taste, check the seasoning. Just a little bit of black pepper. Our lovely little ranch slaw is ready to go. Next step is to get our breading station ready. People say buttermilk fried, people say batter fried, people say egg wash. Me personally, I like to use just egg whites. The reason being, an egg is made up of fat and protein. All the fat is in the yolk, all the protein is in the white, mostly. Now the reason I don't use yolks is because the fat from the yolks stops the batter from going crispy. One more can't hurt. I'm gonna show you another little easy way to remove egg yolks from eggs to separate them. As opposed to cracking them, cracking your fingers, doing the two cup me method with both sides of the shell, crack them into the bowl ever so carefully to try and not break the yolks. And then with your fingers, you can lift them out and all the egg white comes off. Aha, so one has broken. This is good because I can actually show you something else. If we try and pick this little egg yolk up with our hands, it's all that's gonna happen is gonna mix through all those whites. And we don't want that, because all we want are the egg whites. We don't want any yolk. Crack one more little eggy, keep the shell. We'll peel this one out. If ever this happens, you can actually use the egg shell to get that egg yolk out of the whites. Ever so carefully. Once again, and as you can see, the eggshell has the ability to cut through the egg whites without breaking the egg yolk too much and sending it all through our whites. To this, we're just gonna add some water. Now, just a really light break up. You're not looking to break this down completely. What you're looking for is if you run this up with your whisk, you're still gonna get some structure from those whites. That structure from the whites will help get all those beautiful ripples and crispy bits on your chicken. Here we have our gorgeous little boned out pieces of chicken. We have our seasoned flour, seasoned spice flour. We have our broken down egg whites. Now, it's a simple matter of dry, wet, dry. What I'm gonna do here is, here's my lined sheet pan with a little bit of baking paper. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour onto that tray. So when we place our breaded chicken onto it, it won't stick. We won't lose any of that beautiful coating. Just like the good old days, one dry hand, one wet hand. So in we go. Already messed it up, it happens. Now, it's important with this, you don't wanna get your hands in there, you don't wanna smash it about. The more you try and press and touch and fiddle with, the more you're gonna break up that beautiful coating of egg whites around the chicken. I'm gonna show you one little secret which I've learned along the way. So, this technique is called skanking up the dredge. No joke. So, all we're gonna do is pour a little bit of that egg white water mixture into our flour. We're gonna mix that round. And what's gonna happen is, the texture of this flour is gonna go to a pretty fine breadcrumb, but all those little chunks of egg white and flour are gonna help stick to the chicken and give you the most gorgeous little ripples. And it's gonna, be, it's gonna give you that fried chicken that you dream about, folks. It looks a bit like breadcrumbs, AKA skanking up the dredge. We place our chicken back into our flour. Now we don't wanna overcrowd the bowl too much, very gently. What you don't wanna do is really press it down because all you're doing, all those beautiful little bits and ripples, of flour that have stuck to the extremities of the chicken. All you're doing is flattening those down. Caress it, love it. And there you go, folks. So you see all those little ripples, all those little bits? When they fry, they're gonna be absolutely stunning. Have a look, see all those gorgeous little ripples? 
When they fry, it's gonna be absolutely stunning. I'm gonna come around, because we're gonna go into the fryer. Our hot chicken sandwich is almost ready. We've got a couple of gorgeous little brioche buns. There they are. We've got our ranch, we've got our slaw. Absolutely stunning chicken. Our deep fryer has been preheated to 165 degrees. We're gonna cook these little chicken thighs for between five to six minutes, depending on doneness. Because two different sizes of chicken, all fries are different, nothing is the same wherever you go. So you gotta adjust things. Realistically, they shouldn't take any longer than six minutes to cook. Very gently, we're just gonna lower these into our oil, just like so. You beauty. Hey Google, set a five minute timer. Second timer for five minutes, and we're starting now. There we go. You can see all those gorgeous little ripples in the chicken. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Absolutely stunning. Now we're gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna toast off our lovely little brioche buns. We've got some softened butter. We've got a little pan on a medium heat. Just give it a nice, generous coating of butter. And into the pan they go. Now just gonna smear a little bit of butter on the base, smear a little bit of butter on the top, because we're gonna toast both sides, folks. Remember, folks, nice medium heat. Not too low, not too high. If you toast the bun on a high heat, very crispy, high chance of burning it, but the center of the bun is not warm. If you toast on a low heat, it'll just sit there forever and do absolutely nothing. Nice medium heat, watch it, touch it, feel it, love it. Oh yeah, glorious. Who doesn't love a hot bun? We're going to get the buns ready. Now, got some of this beautiful, beautiful little ranch sauce. That goes onto the top bun. Absolutely lovely ranched up slaw. That goes onto the bottom bun. Don't be shy with that slaw, folks. Now, chicken has one minute to go. Remember, folks, thermometer. Your thermometer will never lie to you. Ready? 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 And phone's on silent. Yeah, nice work, Dobbers. Probe the small bits. 72 degrees. Little ones are ready. Have a look at the crispy bad boy coating on those. Now, let's probe the big ones. This says it's 89, I don't believe that, not for a second. One piece at 60 degrees, you just don't get that. So, as I said, folks, three pieces ready in five minutes. We're just gonna give one, one more minute to get to temperature. Now our chicken is looking fine. Have a look at these glorious little ripples. If that isn't the piece of fried chicken from your dreams, tell them they're dreaming, mate. Ooh la la. Here comes the fun part. So I got this gorgeous Nashville style glaze. Oh. Oh, glaze up all those bits of chicken like that, like this. Jesus. There you go. Here is my hot chicken sandwich. Beautiful fried chicken, beautiful slaw, beautiful ranch, lovely glaze. Doesn't get much easier, doesn't get much simpler, doesn't get more absolutely gorgeous than that, folks. Ooh, la, la. Ooh la la.